Hello everyone and welcome to So Many Games a Little Time. My name is Joachim and today we'll be playing Deep Rock Galactic. I almost said Galactica, but it's not a battle star. So Danger Darkness Dwarves. Of course this is based on the IP on the game Deep Rock, Gal Deep Rock Galactic. Uh, myself, I've only played a couple of missions, uh, so I can't really shout out Rock and Stone because I haven't played enough. So I can't call myself a diehard player, so sorry about that. But I do know what the game is about, what the point is, what the goal is, so there's always that. All right, so first of all, uh, what I should mention is that we're playing the first mission. And the first mission is this one, New Darkness, New Fortunes. You can see the setup here. This is a challenge level green beard, so it's quite easy. And we're supposed to collect five more kite and three Apoka Bloom. Also, there is no Oppressor or Praetorian cards from the Swarm deck, so they will not be coming out. And also, as a mission-specific event, Glyphith Grunt Nest plays a grunt at each tunnel exit. That might happen when the events come out. Something you might notice if you have the game or have seen the game before. Normally, this is a starter play starting player marker, but I forgot the threat marker at home because I'm not playing at home. So we're using this now as a threat marker and we are not playing with the Goo expansion because I also forgot that at home. But that might be in a future uh, playthrough then. Uh, aside from that, uh, the rules, I will be mostly explaining these as we go along uh, because it's your basic, typical get-in, get-out uh, dungeon crawler, kind of. In the game, there are four different dwarves. Uh, we will be playing with the gunner and the engineer. Uh, aside from that, you've got the driller and the scout, which, like I said, we won't be using. Normally, if you play solo, you can also play with the uh, robot sidekick, uh, but I'm not using him because I'd rather play with two dwarves. Uh, maybe later I'll do a different playthrough with it, but for now, no. Um, the gunner, of course, you can imagine he's a soldier, he's good at that. He has burst fire, which basically means once his minigun starts firing and he has a successive hit, he can continue firing until he has a non-successful hit for free. So it doesn't cost actions. Every dwarf on his turn has three actions that he can use. Um, so, yeah. So the power, powered minigun can do that. He also has a zipline launcher, so he can place ziplines across of these uh, endless pits, so that way other dwarves can go over it. He also has a shield generator, so he can put a shield on his spot, and so he and people around him are all protected for a certain amount of time. Um, then we have uh, his Jewelry Rig Boomstick, that's his secondary weapon. There's only three ammo slots here, but it has blue damage. And then the Power Minigun uh, has five uh, ammo slots. His, his throwable is he has an electrocution grenade, which means he can roll the gun die, the green one, and apply it to each target inside the blast radius. Regardless of the die result, they become uh, stunned, basically. Uh, yeah. And then the, he also has his Rock and Go card, which is for Carl. It has nothing to do with uh, The Walking Dead. Play at any time, lose one health, then discard the current event card and ignore its effects. So that could be quite good. Then we have the Engineer. He has a, a grenade launcher, which is basically explosive damage uh, that he can launch. Um, he has two types of grenades. One just does area damage. The other one... Uh, has only one space that it does damage, but you can choose between two, two dice. Um, he has a sentry turret, so he can place this turret down, which acts as you would imagine a normal turret. It will shoot at uh, the enemies when they move and so on. He has these platforms that he can put on top of uh, spaces so you can uh, move through, all right? So yeah, that's the platform shot. He also has the experimental plasma igniter. So these, two weapons uh, I chose at the start of the game because they have different colors. Like his main color is green, but then he also has blue. And his main color here is red and he also has yellow. So yellow is flames, blue, uh, red is explosive, green is bullets, and blue is armor piercing. Okay. What else does the engineer have? Uh, he has rock and stone forever. Rock and stone forever. Uh, sorry, I'm doing my best. 
old dwarves roll and use the pickaxe die. So I'll put the dice where you can see them a little bit better. Normally in the game when you collect crystals, you put them here, but because we have the deluxe edition, we're going to put them in Molly. So uh, let's put all the dice that we have here so you can also see them. So the flame dice, the explosive dice, the armor piercing dice. We have the gun dice. We have the pickaxe die and then the uh, mine die to see if we actually mine something or not. All right, and then we have the cluster grenade, which is roll two explosive die and apply them to each space hit around a target only. So that's gonna be a good defense actually uh, when he gets around it. All right, so basically a dwarf can do a multitude of things on his turn. So for example, he can move. So moving is actually three spots. So you can move a maximum of three spots. You can stop earlier, of course, if you want to. You can attack, which of course will be using ammo and your weapon and rolling the dice. Uh, a pickaxe, which you can use for a multitude of things, um, but of course mostly mining stuff, but you can also attack. You have a throwable, which means you throw your grenades. Overclock secondary weapon, which means you upgrade these weapons for one action and ammo, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, resupply, which means you drop down a resupply pod and then draw one of these cards. And the way you can get more ammo and health and other stuff. Exchange supplies, which means they will trade amongst themselves. Assist revive, if one of them gets knocked down or knocked out, then you can help each other. And help each other, or you can also uh, help yourself, basically. Play rock and stone cards, they are for free. You can have more than one, you can play more than one as well, so it can be very uh, powerful. And then once that is done, then there's an event phase where we draw and resolve one card. This also might increase this track. If this track ever reaches the end, we lose. We can also lose if both of them are unconscious. Um, and that's basically it, we just wanna get out get the stuff and go back in. And like, like I said, we need to have three Markites, so these things, and two, uh, was it Apoka, Apoka something? Apoka Bloom? Apoka Bloom, right? Yeah, Apoka Bloom. And those things we can find uh, underneath the question marks. So the question marks will have two loot bugs, which can give us loot, duh. Um, and also Apoka Blooms. So, uh, even though I play with two dwarves, I have to choose one, do three actions with it, do the event card, and then do the next one, and that's how we keep going. Um, once they reach, once they leave this uh, launch pod, or drop pod, they, we will flip it over and become a regular space. Once we've accomplished all the, well, the mission objectives, then it will flip back over again. All right, so let's start the game. We're gonna start with the gunner. So he's gonna move three spots. So first one, flip this over. It's an Apoka Bloom, cool. So he will collect this because he's gonna move over it. So two and three. Then I'm gonna have him move three spots again. One, and let's check what this is. An Apoka Bloom, okay, cool. So it's two and then three. So you can see what I'm gonna do already. Um, actually, I don't even need to go there. I can just be, I can just do one, this is three, right? So two, now okay, I'll just stay here, three. And then I'm going to, so that's two actions. So I moved and I moved, and then I'm gonna spend one ammo. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna spend one ammo and I'm gonna attack these three. So because I only see the first one here, I cannot target the other two, but all I need is one success. And I get two successes. So I assign this one to here, and the other two, for example, to here and here, it doesn't really matter. So I kill this one, so this one goes away. And then because of my skill, I can spend another ammo and then roll again, because it's successive uh, attacks. So because of my positioning, I can only attack him again. So, you know, let's hope I can keep it going for sure. So this one, this grunt is also dead. I spend another ammo and I do it all over again. Let's hope I get three for three. I do, yeah, coolio. All right, so they're all dead. 
So that's the end of his turn. So then we get the first event card. And that is, we're closing in. Increase swarm threat by one. Oh, okay. If this didn't trigger a swarm, activate all creatures, but there's no creatures left, so that's okay. All right, then um, it is the engineer's turn. So he's gonna do, I think he's gonna put a turret here somewhere. So let's do one, two, three. This flips over, because they're all gone now. There we go. And then he's gonna, he's gonna spend one ammo and one action to place a turret here. Oh, it's not supposed to flip this over. It is a loot bug. Then I have one action left. And I think I'll just go ahead and mine that loot bug. So let's see what's in there. Ah, oh, I can do it, because uh, maybe I couldn't do it. So the loot bug is gone. And that will give me one gold. One gold. And uh, also, I have to roll this die to see if I get anything else. I do. And that one is Nitra. Okay, and that Nitra can later on be used to call in a supply pod if I have three of them. So here's one Nitra, I'll put it in Molly. Okay, so then we draw, that's his three actions, right? Move and then uh, turret and this, yeah. So then see what happens, stuck. Your boot gets stuck between some hard, jagged rocks. Lose one health to yank your foot out or take your time to carefully release your foot from the rock trap and become stunned. Either way, increase swarm threat by one. So if I keep this, if I get stuck, that means next round I only have one movement action. I don't want that, or just one action. So I'll take the health hit, and uh, that way I can still have three actions. There's his turn, I'm gonna try to hit through these walls to get to the minerals. They're gonna go different ways. I don't know if it's smart, but we'll see. One, so he's gonna knock that wall down for one action. Actually, we're gonna knock this one down for one action. And then I can move. So it's one, two, and three. That's my second action. I can reveal this one, and it's a loot bug. And then for my third action, uh, I'm going to try to mine this one here. So then I have one markite already. But I cannot. So I'm just tick, 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 and I guess nothing happens. Event card. They're closing in. Increase swarm threat by one. If this didn't trigger a swarm, activate all creatures, but there's no creatures, so nothing is activated. All right. All right, then it's the engineer's turn. Uh, so he is going to move one spot. Then he's going to use his uh, platform shot. So he places two platforms here. So that's his second action. And as a third action, he is going to go here. So one, two, three, and then reveal the last Apoka Bloom. So we almost have those. So it's going pretty, pretty sweet so far. And then remove, re reveal an event. There's a pebble in my boot. You take time to empty your boot and find a lump of gold. Collect one gold, increase sw swarm threat by one. And the threat is now activated, but we do get one gold, so at least there's that. And uh, yeah, the th swarm threat is activated, and what happens then? Flip over the top swarm card, place the creatures as the card dictates, then activate all creatures. Okay, so let's flip it over. It is... Grunts, grunts everywhere. Place two grunts at each tunnel exit. Activate all creatures. So, uh, it's especially bad news for the engineer. But he does have a really nice grenade. So that's at least that. So, first one. And then two. So two grunts. And then two more. One here. And one here. And then they're activated. So this one will move one here on top of the token. And this one will move one. And then this one will move one, two, and one, two, three. Okay, so now it's a little bit more precarious. 
Um, because the gunner, he only has two ammo left, of course, but he still has his jury rig boomstick as well that he could potentially use. Um, or his pickaxe. So first of all, I'm going to use my pickaxe because if I roll a double pickaxe, I can get a Morkite and also attack those guys. So let's see what happens. No. Wish. Um, two. I could have actually used this for Carl, but anyway. Okay, I'm going to use my electrocution grenade. So I'm going to throw it here. So it kind of fits there. So it means I roll one. So I could actually just miss potentially. But regardless of the result, they become stuns. So there's also that. Yeah, it's an empty, so nothing happens, but they are both stunned. They're both stunned, so they're basically not going to do anything next time they're activated. Um, in that case, he is going to zip line to the other side. Well, actually, no, he's just going to try to mine again. Double. Okay, so he mines the Morkite. There we go. And then this is placed here. And then he kills one of these guys. Stunned and dead for the second uh, pick. Oh, actually, I could do this one. Actually, I'm not going to kill it. I'm going to use it on the loot bug because that gives us an extra gold. And then an extra one of these gems. So it's one gold and nothing. Aye. So disappointing. So gold, there we go. All right, so then let's take a look. Rapid spitballer growth. Place a spitballer on any empty ground spaces, one to three spaces from the drop pod. All other creatures activate. That's not good news. So from the drop pod, this is, so it has to be closest to a dwarf. So I guess it's gonna be here that this guy is gonna come. All right. All other creatures activate. So these two don't activate, but they do lose their stun tokens. So stunned tokens. There we go. And then these two activate, so they're going to attack uh, the engineer. So the grunt is going to roll a die to see if it does any damage or not. You can see that here because there's only one die here. So let's see. It does bite. So that means that it's one damage for our good friend, the engineer. And then we roll for the other one. Another damage. Okay, I'm starting to regret not using that. Uh, not getting stuck. But anyway, so that's it. That's done for now. Suddenly it's become a lot more difficult. All right, engineer's turn. He's going to use his cluster grenade because that's going to clear it out around him. Uh, I think that's the easiest way. Although he can just use his grenade launcher. That's probably even better. So he uses one explosive and that'll all do uh, one damage to the two next to him. Yeah, so that's that face. There are some other faces like this is scare, they run away and double explosion. So basically it is, you can turn the area here. So both of them, boom, are dead. So that's his first action. And of course that requires one of these. And also did this, this one get shot at just because it spawned? That's a good question. So yeah, actually the turret shoots at uh, the, what's his name? The rapid spitballer. But I guess it's on the other side of this here. Yeah, rapid spitballer, spitball infector. Yeah, so I guess it's a spitballer infector. So he does have uh, protection, so it doesn't even matter. Even if we roll it, it does nothing. It just bounces off him. He has a lot of health though, so that's not very good. Anyway, so here we go. We continue. The attrition grenade is used, by the way, so that is discarded. Oh, is it? Was it used? Yes, it was used there, yeah, because he stunned them. 
All right, so we draw an event. No, no, sorry, no event, because he just did his action. He killed two. Um, let's see what he's going to do next, because he's in range of him. He is going to roll a pickaxe to try to get this destroyed, and then maybe move out of the way of him, because if he attacks, he can hide behind these, I believe. Let me just double check that. It says here, the speed bar is a tough plan like enemy. It's immobile since it's rooted to the floor. It fires acidic mortar globs by swelling up and spewing them at the nearest dwarf, possibly knocking him over. Yeah, but uh, it also needs line of sight, so I can hide behind these stalagmites. So let's see if I can roll one. Oh my goodness, nothing. All right. I'll use Rock and Stone Forever, which means all dwarves roll the mining die. So let's do the engineer first. Nothing again. All right. Let's do him. One. Okay, so he's just going to turn around and kill one of these guys. So he still has one action left because he killed them and then he tried to uh, destroy this but failed. So you could just turn around and shoot it, but I'm guessing it has quite a number of protections. It is not protected against fire, so that's good. Hmm. It does have five life, so it's going to take a while to kill. If I use fire, then I roll two fire ones and I pick one. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to attack him, but then I can only do two damage. This seems kind of silly. I can't really run away either. Um, what is his range? What is his range? Range seven. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. Yeah. Um, what am I going to do with him? I don't have much to, I have two golds and yeah. What are my options? Move, attack, pickaxe, throwable. Mm, I can do throwable. That's not really gonna work uh, well, to be honest. Overclock, resupply, exchange supplies. No, what does overclock do? How much does it cost? One action and one gold to upgrade this experimental plasma igniter to hit this one. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to try to mine again. Actually, we need to bring this guy down regardless. So I'm going to attack him with uh, my experimental plasma igniter. Spend one ammo. Let's see. All right, so I do one damage to him because he's not protected against that. Uh, so he gets one damage cube on him here. So four more to go and that's the end of the round uh because that's his three actions so let's see what happens they're closing in increase swarm threat by one if this didn't trigger a swarm activate all creatures oh great so we start from the top to the bottom which is on the other side normally so we start with him so he's going to attack and see if he's successful he is so one damage to the gunner then it is uh, this one, the spitter. Like this one activates, but it just shoots and just bounces off. So it doesn't matter because it has resistance. So he's going to roll one die. Now, the problem is if he rolls an exclamation mark, I fall over. Uh, nothing. Phew, he misses. Ah, it's very nice. All right, so that's done. So then is the gunner. Um, I think he should probably help take this guy out um so he's gonna go back one two three uh he has line of sight because as far as i know the turret does not block line of sight it does not block line of sight so i'm gonna roll three dice spend one oh but i can only do that's not a good idea actually the boomstick is armor piercing So, um, 
<sighs> I should have just done for Carl. I forgot to do that. I should have just stopped him from spawning. Mm, do I want to go back actually? Because oh, this gold should not be there. Uh, thinking. Because I need to, I need more ammo, basically. So that's one action. Can I call down a drop pod? A drop pod, I think I can afford it. Right? It has the actions here, but not the costs. So it's kind of a shame. So resupply is three nitra. I don't think I have three nitra. I have one. But I think gold can be used to substitute. So one, yeah, so one action and basically almost everything here, these three are used. So I summon down a supply pod. I could put it next to him, but I actually prefer to put it next to him. So here's a supply pod, or here, so it's blocked, he can't pass. Ah. Um, or can he? Yes, he can. So I'm just going to put it here and then see what came out. It has eight ammo, one special ammo and three health. So at six, seven, eight, one special ammo and three health. So that's my second action. And then I'm gonna fire at him. So I spend one ammo and roll three dice. So I can see him because I can I can run a line here. So I can put one here and one here. So he's dead. Oh, and actually I could have put two of them here, but uh, and in, in that case, actually I'm gonna do that because I prefer to do to damage this guy at least once. And then because I hit him once, I can go again and spend uh, one here. Two. So I once again damage him for one. So he's almost dead. He has two life left. All right, that's the end of my turn because he moved supply pod and then shot. So bugs, bugs, bugs. Increase swarm threat by two, but no form further than the next swarm space. Okay, I can live with that for now. Then is the engineer who's still stuck there, but now he sees an ability to actually kill this guy. So first um, he is going to, well, we have almost nothing left. Huh, because he's not, is he protected? He's protected against explosions, so that doesn't work. The yellow does, fire does, but then it has to shoot twice. Um, all right, first I'm going to try the pickaxe. No, we have to kill him, we have to kill him. All right, I'll do the experimental plasma igniter. I spend one ammo and then roll two yellow dice and I get to choose which one. Oh, double damage. That means five, it means he's dead. Yeah. Awesome. Worth it, worth it, worth it, worth it. So he's dead. And because he's dead, he gets a rock and stone card, which is the bigger they are, the harder they fall. We roll any number of ranged attack dice. That's really nice. Okay, so he is bleeding, uh, but he's still going to try mine. Because even if he runs back, he has two actions, so he'd have to go one, two, three, one. He's going to try to mine first to, to create an opening and then go back potentially. Nothing. <sighs> Why? I got to do it again. Nothing again. I'm not allowed. I'm not allowed to mine. Apparently. Okay. Event and then gunner. Unsettling rumblings. Increase swarm threat by one. If this didn't trigger a swarm, draw another event card. Okay. We're gonna do for Carl and ignore it. Then is the gunner. 
Um, he is going to do an action and reload. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Um, and then he is going to uh, move one, two, three. And then as a fourth one, he's going to uh, zip line to there. So he's going to, as, as a third action, he's going to zip line like this. But I don't think he moves yet, right? No. So he just puts it there, but he doesn't move yet. So that's the end of his turn. Glowing walls. Place one gold in the wall closest to you. So here. If several walls are at an equal distance, choose which one. Increase swarm threat by one. So yeah, the swarm is activated anyway. So uh, that means we draw a swarm card and see what happens. What happened with the previous swarm card, actually? I probably put it somewhere where I was supposed to. They got protection. Place one Warden and then one Mactera spawn at exit two. So Warden at exit two and one Mactera. Mactera, flying one. Oh, the engineer is in trouble. And then um, place one grunt at all other exits. So just one grunt here. Luckily, it is the engineer's turn now. So he goes one, two, three, one, and then takes all the health. So he's back up to full health and that's his turn. Just one, two, and then, uh, yeah. And the turret is within three spots, so he can't shoot him yet. Aerial surprise. Something awful swoops out of the darkness and slashes at you before disappearing back into the gloom. Lose one health or throw yourself to, to the ground to avoid getting hit. But because this is an attack, the sentry gun can shoot. And if the sentry gun has a hit, then nothing happens. So let's hope the sentry gun shoots it out of the sky. It does, so nothing happens. Okay. All right. So back to him then. So he can zip line here and line this, um, which is what he's going to do. So one, two, three, and then four. And as his last action, he's going to roll the mining die. One. Okay. Yay, another one. Okay, so uh, event card now. Eh? Collapsing floor. The floor gives way below you. Roll two damage dice, basically. Ignore any damage result. If you want exclamation mark, become uh, fallen, basically. You accidentally uncover a piece of lost gear in a cave pocket below you. Take a random upgrade token. So nothing there. So a random upgrade token, it's now 848, so that's 16, that's 20. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20. It's this one, which is a plus red die for the gunner. So basically from now on, when I use my powder minigun, I also get an explosive die to use. It's pretty neat. I'll leave these here for later. Okay, so that's the end of my turn, right? Move twice and then mine, and that's it. Oh, that was the event, actually. Uh, yeah. So now it's the engineer again. So we don't need to be there again. We actually have to go here, but he's a bit scared because of these guys, to be honest. This one has um, two life. This one has probably a bunch more. Also two, actually. 
Yeah. So first of all, let's read what it says about him. The Mactera spawn. The Mactera can fly over obstacles, including stalagmites, but can't end its movement on them. This creature has a dangerous spit attack with a stun ability that reduces the target's action points to one on their next turn. That sucks. And then we have the Warden. When the Glyphid Warden activates, it moves towards the nearest creature. If after its movement, the Warden is more than three spaces away from the nearest creature, place one Grunt next to the Warden on the adjacent empty space nearest to a Dwarf. The Warden has no attack, but generates a protective shield around creatures within three spaces of its location. The shield cancels two damage per attack. When the Warden is killed during an attack, its protective shield disintegrates and the creatures it was protecting immediately lose the associated protection bonus. Aha. Uh -huh. But it itself is not protected. Okay. All right. So basically, it's protecting this one. So we're supposed to take this one out. So um, let's see. Yeah, I could first of all reload my experimental plasma igniter. Uh, we have nothing to upgrade. We have no stuff whatsoever. He still has the cluster grenade, which is two damage. Uh, be good enough to take this one out, actually. Yeah, but isn't he protected against explosive damage? He is, so that is bad. Because everything he can do, he's protected against. He's weak against the gunner. So, um, what is he going to do? Let's see. I think I'm going to move uh, forward and then take a shot at him anyway. Because I'll be able to shoot twice. But I have to have double hits twice. That's, that's, that's bad, actually. That's not a good idea. What if I upgrade this? It's this double yellows. No, it's not going to help much. Plus, I can't upgrade. So, um, what am I going to do? I am going to... Uh, oh, I have no idea. It's kind of a bad situation because of his protections. Because of his protections... And I can only do yellow and red and that's, those are his protections. So. I think he's going to go over here. One, two. And then fire at these guys. Um, but then... I don't want to do that, actually. What else can I do? Move, attack, pickaxe, throwable, uh, overclock, resupply, exchange supplies, assist, revive, or play rock and stone cards. But that's not really what I want to do. And um, I think I will go like this. One, two, three, four, five, and then mine this one. Try anyway. No, I'm not allowed to mine as usual. All right, mission specific events. Follow the event this specific to this mission, and that is probably nothing good. Place a grunt at each tunnel exit. They're multiplying, especially a bunch of people here now. Okay, so then it is his turn. So he's gonna move back. He actually wants to get to here. So he's gonna move back out for sure. So one, two, three. And then one, two, three. And then he's gonna fire. He just needs to thin out the herd there. Okay, so give me at least one hit, okay? At least one. That's all I'm asking, just one hit. Yes, two even. All right, so that takes care of the one behind him. He's dead. And the one here, he's dead. And then with my skill, I could, I'm going to spend another ammo and then fire again to get rid of the last one as well. That's no problem. Up, 
There you go. Gunner's Cleaning Ink. So that's his turn done. Mission specific event again. So <laughs> he cleaned them up and here they are again. Hey, pop. And then here. Okay, and it's him. So he's going to throw his cluster grenade. Range four. One, two, three, four. He's, oh, but yeah, he's just going to hit him and they're going to be protected. All right, he really needs to start mining there. First action, mining die. Yes, finally. You get the Markite and put this here. So his next turn will be move one and then mine again. Twice. So he gets to take this one. And uh, destroy this one. And then because he destroys this, I think I have to see if anything falls out with the uh, with the die. Dun dun dun. Yep. So I roll this one. As this, which is which one again? Gold. Okay, that's not bad. Since gold is basically wild. All right, and then an event. I can't stop spitting. Activate all creatures. If no creatures are in play, never mind. Uh, activate all creatures. Okay. So we start with the small ones. So uh, this one's going to do this. So this one doesn't activate. So he's just standing there. Then this one. One, two, three. One, two, three. Then we have the uh, flying one, which is a Mactera spawn. He moves three. So one, one, two, three. We have the warden who also moves three. This is one, two. Okay. So this one is protected, but these two are not protected. Um, that's everybody activated. And then it's the turn of the gunner, right? Yes, because we rolled this one last. So obviously the gunner needs to go and help out. He's got great range uh, with his um, minigun because it's five. So he's one, two, three. He can't see him. Oh, that's annoying. Wait, one, two, three. So this one actually had a shot at both of them. So let's see if any of them have survived. The first one did not survive. The second one did survive, but then he would have been, uh, did he still do full movement? Because it was here and here, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he survived and then it would still be like this. But at least there's one less. Um, all right, so anyway, one, two, three. Can you see it then? So it's BB, if he's here, it's one, two, three, four, five. He can shoot, yeah. So one, two, three. And then he's gonna fire in one straight line down to the warden. The warden is not protected by, um, by regular bullets. So he doesn't have a protection against it. So I spend one ammo. Two hits, so he's instantly dead. And that means the protection of these are gone. What was his protection again? For how far? Um, within three spaces, so it's actually here. So when this one was here, he was still protected. So actually that one that was dead is not dead. But because I killed a warden, I can spend another ammo because it was a successful hit and I can roll again has three hits so these two well how much health does this guy have and is he protected against bullets no so one two three four five so he is dead oh no he's protected yeah. one two or just one for this one and then two for this one yeah both dead 
And then I can roll again, spend another ammo. But then he's empty though, but he can reload later. Yep, boom, dead. All right, so what did he do? He moved once and then shot. So I see there's one action. And with that action, he's gonna reload, reload again here. So the engineer, oh, and actually I was supposed to roll the explosive die twice. So that was scary. Well, let's just say I forgot about it. Okay, whatever. All right, so events. Mission specific events. So more are spawned again. So one and one. Okay, so now it's the engineer's turn. So move one and then let's see if he can mine. Yes, so hop. Put one there, and then he has one more action left. So of course he's gonna one, two, three, turn around, because now all they have to do is get to the exit. Ouch, movement on the cave ceiling releases some minerals. A piece of nitra drops in your head. Good thing you have a thick skull. So we get some free nitra. And then it is the gunner's turn. So because we have everything now, this turns back open. So he's going to go one, two, three, up, and he's in. We reveal an event. They're closing in. Increase swarm threat by one. If this didn't figure a swarm, activate all creatures. So it's going to be one, two, three. Uh, one, two, three. But then this one will shoot. Actually, if this one goes here, does the pod stop blocks view or not? I don't think so. No, it does not. So basically the moment they come out, it shoots at it both. So this one's dead. And then of course th this one tries to go that way. So it's one, two, three here. Unless it gets hit, it does not. So it survives. And then the one at the bottom, one, two, three. There's the engineer's turn. One, two, three. And then we're, oh, this is actually here. Home free. No, we're not. Oh, I forgot the bottom. Ah. Okay, so I reset his movement because I'm actually not finished yet. I have to pick this up. So he was here at the end of his turn. So or here, but it doesn't matter. One, two, three, pick it up. One, two, three, one, two, three. So he's not there yet. But we do have all the apocalypse rooms we need now. So we draw one more event. Mission specific, so it doesn't really matter. Two more spawn. One here, one here. It does matter because it's his turn now. So he's gonna turn around. And also he was supposed to shoot this one. Sorry about the messy ending, but this one's dead, thanks to him. And then he's going to shoot, he's going to spend ammo to shoot these two. And also one explosion die because of his upgrade. So two explosions and two hits. So it doesn't really need the explosion because he can see both. So they're both dead. Cannot see anybody else. Wait, he cannot see them, can he? He cannot see them actually. So I didn't roll. I move out one, two, and then I roll. So that's my second action. One was move. So definitely both dead. And then my third action, since this is now correct, yeah, I move back in. And then events, top spot. You spot a lost ammo crate that was left behind on an earlier mission. Unfortunately, it's surrounded by jagged razor sharp crystals. Optional, if you're not on the floor, if you're not lie down, lose one health to get to the ammo crate, fully restock a weapon of your choice. I'm not gonna do anything because I finished the game now, boom. Finished, I've got 
five here. I've got all the Apoca Bloom and it's done. <sighs> Yay, success. Now there's no end mission uh, or whatever. It is just uh, up to the next mission, I guess. So uh, that's it. There's no end game stuff, whatever. But uh, yeah, it's cool. It was a bit rocky, I know, uh, but it'll get better with more plays. I just really wanted to get a playthrough out there. Um, I made some mistakes here and there, but then I tried to uh, edit it a bit. So I hope it all is pretty clear how to play. The mining die really messed me up, though. It was it was not fun. I uh, missed so many things. But yeah, in the end, I think it's a really nice game. I'm happy I backed it. It's fun. And I can see it with four players. It's definitely a lot of fun. Spread out, going teams and stuff like that. Yeah. And there are how many missions exactly? And there are... Dun dun dun... 14 missions. So if you do the deep dive version, you actually go through 14 missions, which is pretty cool. I never used my gunner's ability, the defense. I should have actually. But aside from that, yeah, cool. I really enjoyed this and I'm looking forward to doing more missions actually. Yeah. Well, Deep Rope Galactic, I'm not going to give my full feelings yet because it's just one starting mission, you know, on the easiest setting. And I, it was hairy there for a moment, but yeah. Anyway, I think it's fine to stop there. My name is Joachim, this was so many games at the time. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.